Hello, Eric. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, how's everything going? Where, where are you right now? Um, I'm actually uh, in Westford in the office. So. Okay, and is that usually like your uh, location? Your like, uh, like your home base? No, not not so much. Uh, I'm I'm actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you want to talk about a home base, my home base is actually in Emea, uh, in Europe. I live okay. in the, the Netherlands. Um, but for this year, I brought my family over to the States. Uh, I was originally born in Oregon, so uh, giving my kids a little bit of an experience in the States. And we're living uh, out at the beach on an island in North Carolina. So. Oh, that sounds really nice. So, well, that was going to be kind of like my first question. Like, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work with, uh, with Red Hat? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you heard a little bit about background about me, but uh, I've been with Red Hat about seven, going, well, I think this month is seven years, actually. Um, I started out for three years in Europe as a solutions architect, uh, doing like the technical sales role. Uh, moved over to the middleware BU, uh, have a pretty strong background in, in uh, BPM rules, uh, processes, things like that. Uh, did this in, in the financial world uh, before I joined Red Hat continued to work on that in the middleware BU. Um, most people know me from, from a lot of stuff I've done around the, the, the JBoss BRMS product and later the JBoss BPM suite. Uh, so big app, de app development uh, background. And uh, I've just recently transitioned into something called the integrated solutions business unit. That's kind of a, a business unit uh, on top of all the other ones. Uh, we now look uh, across the entire Red Hat portfolio or solutions that make sense for our customers. Well, thank you for that. Really, really cool. And I wanted to ask you, like, how is it to work with, within Red Hat? Like, uh, do you think it makes a difference that you are so close involved, like, with open source? Like, because it's it's almost like you think about Red Hat and immediately you think about open source. So, how is it? I, 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 that's something that I usually ask people that come to the show, to the OpenShift profiles, because I think it's so important that people understand that side of Red Hat and OpenShift. I, I think that's probably one of the one of the main reasons that I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan, always have been uh, since the early days of my, uh, you know, IT career, development career. Um, I like having access to everything and, and not being stopped by proprietary stuff that doesn't let me dig deeper and find out why it's not working or why I can't do what I want to do. Um, I think having that kind of openness has is, is now been proven in the market with a company like Red Hat. Uh, there's a lot of companies that see a lot of value in that. and. Uh, I think having that background and being able to dig into what's going on and to assist and to help and to, to, to provide feedback or, or you know, whether that's documentation feedback or code feedback, that's up to you. Um, at the higher level, it's, it's really fascinating to watch how customer feature requests actually happen, right? And, and even in between major releases, uh, special, special patches are sent out with their fixes for that specific customer. Uh, this does happen. Um, and I think that makes all the difference in the world. And, and I really can't imagine, you know, not working at Red Hat. It's, it's kind of a, one of the first companies I've ever been at where you, you, you get that feeling, right? You, you really want to be part of what's going on. It's, it's pretty magical. Okay, well, that's, that's great. And so I saw that one of your blog posts, you were talking about like CDK. So, like, I'm trying to bring the conversation a little bit towards the, like the OpenShift side. I know that you are not part of the OpenShift team, but uh, I, I've seen that you do like a lot of like blog posts and things like that. And you were talking about the CDK. So, how does uh, like the CDK help you uh, in your day by day? How like if you are a developer using OpenShift, how does that help you? Um, before I get too far into that, maybe I can add a little bit of background on, on uh, how I got over into the OpenShift stuff. So when, when OpenShift got acquired uh, way back when, um, I was one of the first, uh, you know, I saw value right right away. You know, you go tinker with some of our new acquisitions and see what it is. And I was completely fascinated with the, with the whole platform as a service kind of idea that, that was very quickly uh, integrated into our own tooling and our own, own stuff. Um, you pretty much find everything that I've blogged and, and put out there and, and, and whether it had anything to do with OpenShift or not, presentations, workshops, I host everything on OpenShift, right? Absolutely everything I've done you can you can find online and it's, it's running on an OpenShift instance. Um, 
I, I came awful close to becoming an evangelist uh, way back in those days for them. Uh, that didn't work out. I went into the, the role in the middleware BU instead. Uh, but I've always kept close ties with what's going on and watching it very closely and, and doing pretty much everything I do in it or on it and and, and watching the transformation between what, what was cartridges at the time now is going to be Docker images or, or images, containerized stuff. Um, it's, it's it's really fascinating to see where it's going and, and to watch the adoption curve, you know, going up so steeply. Um, and and that brings us around to things like you know the images that you have, the all-in-one image on OpenShift. I also wrote about and was playing with and tinkering with. Uh, in my current role, uh, one of the product solutions we have is it's called the Red Hat Cloud Suite, which will be coming soon. Um, this is taking the product portfolio from the operating system, uh, virtualization, and OpenStack layers uh, up through containerized uh, atomic enterprise uh, layers, uh, including OpenShift uh, Enterprise on top of that, and, and cloud forms for the management, orchestration, and monitoring, right? Uh, so what, what is the interface for an, for an application developer from my world uh, to this stack or to a cloud suite like that? And uh, that's pretty much the, the, the open shift is going to be the, 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 the face of what we're, we're working with and what we're looking at. And uh, so I started digging a little bit into that because part of my job and part of what I do is, you know, speak at conferences or large groups or, or putting videos together or, or doing webinars, right? It's pretty hard to put a data center on your laptop. That's basically what we're talking about. You know, this is, this is some really heavy duty stuff, right? And uh, that, that doesn't scale out on a laptop. It's just not the way it works. So... The interface you what you can talk to a stack like that and explain all that, maybe show a video of someone that's done something at data center with it, but that's not really how you want to do it. You want to do some live stuff and show what this means for your for your application delivery, your application development. And uh, so my plan was to dig a little bit into what would be the best interface to do something like that. Um, so I, I played a little bit with the OpenShift uh, uh, all-in-one image, and then I, I stumbled upon a, a relatively new project, this this CDK container development kit that's uh, been going on here at Red Hat. And, and they're doing a big push right now of, and some of the beta releases of what you're seeing me write about uh, are, are tying this into the, to the uh, IDE, so the JBoss Developer Studio, and um, giving us some kind of integrated experience where you can install it quickly, get spun up quickly, and have some, some pre-canned stuff ready to go. One of them happens to be the OpenShift the Enterprise uh, uh, sort of all-in-one image then inside the, 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 the JDK or the JDK, the CDK. Um, so that's what I tied together. Um, they're a little rough. Of course, they're not finished. They're not, you know, publicized the stuff as GA yet. So the install process wasn't exactly uh, uh, easy. So I went around and, and, you know, I put that into my demo template, which I've done for all my demos. And I got a lot of attention and, and, and you know, It'll probably be a little bit different when they release it. I don't expect it to continue to be, you know, my my little demo template. But it's it's just something I don't want to have to repeat that install process. So so I, everything I do, I put out there. You know, it's about teach and share, and then uh, you know, we share, we grow. And uh, yeah, I, I I think this is going to be something that's going to going to get people spun up a lot quicker. Uh, that that's the whole idea behind it. Uh, get you going, have some uh, examples ready to go out of the box instead of having to to put your whole container. Uh, process new container installation layers and stuff like that together. Oh well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that uh, you gave us like all that background. So quite likely, a lot of people are going to be interested in that. Like that's the kind of thing that you don't really see like on the blog or like uh, uh, on documentation. That's kind of like the experience that you are living uh, working with within Red Hat. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what you do like day by day. Like uh, we have talked with a couple of evangelists. We have talked with a couple of like people that are moving all around. Uh, does your like position, your current position, like take you different places? Do you just like do presentations in one area, different countries? How does that work? Yeah. Uh, so uh, basically the last four years, I I've been doing a role that's uh, internally recognized as a technical marketing manager. Um, but externally, we, we, we call these uh, JBoss technology evangelist or Red Hat technology evangelist. So there's a deviation from just the pure community evangelist that you see. Uh, like uh, I think your previous one of your previous interviews with Mark Marcus Easel, he uh, is one of the developer evangelists, right? So th there's a very large uh, focus, more so on community uh, projects, open source community stuff, uh, kind of kind of generating interest and in, and in, in digging into those pieces. Uh, what I tend to focus on or what I do focus on is uh, uh, everything to do around the products. 
So once the open source project has been turned into a product, uh, you're missing the kind of noise that you're seeing in the community with evangelism out there. So we use technical marketing managers for that. So what does my day look like? Where do I go? That's a pretty tough question. Um, <laughs> Uh, right. There are several things that we're focusing on as things that I've, I've found that work. Uh, uh, kind of can give a sketch around that. I wrote some blog posts about that too, uh, some articles. Um, I, I believe a huge part of it is, is teaching and sharing. Uh, so I, I listen very acutely to what our field is doing with the products and what the customers are, are asking of them. And you try to support that. So both internally and, and you know, out in the, in the wild, you, you, you see responses to stuff and, and I talk to people. And if somebody has a need to be able to demonstrate something in a product, which is an awful lot of what the demo projects were that I did in, in JBoss, uh, uh, BRMS and the BPM space, uh, whether that is containerized in the cloud or locally on your machine, those are the ways we try to offer it. Um, they're basically demonstrating features or, or something that's a little bit difficult for them to understand to do normally. And uh, so we'll, we'll put something like that together, uh, put it in easily repeatable form uh, so you can spin it up, spin it down. Um, it's, it's strongly assisting the solution architects who you know, are told today, tomorrow, you're going to be talking to the, a customer about a certain product or a certain technology, and they may not have a lot of time to get prepared for it. So it's really nice if you have some stuff in a can, uh, have a little video explanation around it or a couple of steps, and they can get spun up really quick. And, oh, yeah, that's how that works. You know, I had the training a long time ago, but I just haven't talked about it for six months. So it's, it's kind of nice to support that. Uh, that's one aspect. Number two is, is being vocal about it. So you have to get out there and you have to own stuff in, in, in social media. You have to own like tags, uh, categories, uh, topics, or at least get your voice in the mix. Um, I believe consistency in writing is really important. I usually write something two to three times a week. Uh, uh, at the at the peak of my my you know BRMS BPM time, I've now transitioned to a new role, so I'm building up a, a, a base on that and, and, and a foundation where I'm comfortable with to, to talk about. Uh, you move into a space where you're not an expert. You're not you know you're not going to be an expert overnight. And there's there's aspects that I'm an expert of that I bring into that area. That's what I want to focus on. Um, another part of it is is uh, uh, also being able to go out and talk about this stuff. So finding the right places. It's a whole lot different than, than the developer evangelism in that I'm not looking just to talk at any developer conferences. You tend to target a little bit more specifically based on the crowd you're trying to reach, which often includes customers, analysts, that kind of thing. Um, that doesn't preclude me from showing up at like a Java user group or something like that. Um, I tend to, to backload my visits that way. Uh, so if I show up somewhere, uh, for example, uh, something I'm working on right now is Code of Motion in Amsterdam. Uh, submitted a bunch of stuff. Uh, if, if that works out, I'll probably do a couple of user groups around it. And I'll also stop into the office and do some sales enablement, such as talking to our colleagues and explaining some of the new stuff that's coming and what it looks like. That That's my life, right? That's really how it goes around. Uh, another large chunk of it is the enablement. When new products come out, uh, for example, what I just described with that cloud suite, we'll visit the regions and, and bring some training and, and get some hands-on stuff together so they can, they can learn that. Same thing happened with the, with the JBoss products. Uh, uh, it's getting to the point now where we're, we're growing so large that we have uh, enablement uh, uh, parts of our organization that do that. Uh, so then my role is then more assisting to make sure the content either is mine that they're using or what we're developing is the right stuff. And they'll take that over. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of a okay. snapshot. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's a, it's a really good idea what you what you do, and uh, thank you for that. Um, so I don't take tons of your time. I'm just going to ask you like one last question, and obviously it has to do with OpenShift. Like, what do you think about the latest version? Have you been able to try it? Uh, any features that you would like to see, like in future updates and things like that? Um, I'm not a big feature hound. Um, I, I, of course, I've been playing with the stuff that's coming along. Uh, shifting more and more to OpenShift on uh, uh, enterprise, I should say. Um, the one request that I've had internally, and ex I think you're hearing externally too, is it would be awful nice if they'd make OpenShift Online the same. Uh, uh, right now, it's, it's still the, the version 2. It's coming. It's not going to be very much longer. But it, it used to be the other yeah. way around, uh, where we released that first and then the rest. And in this case, the containerized stuff, uh, they, they did it uh, first enterprise, and then they're going to do it online. 
So maybe next time, yeah. please don't do that. <laughs> I miss <laughs> I miss not being able to just spin stuff up and share it with the world. You know. Yeah. Yeah, right now, uh, I know that the entire team is working hard on that, and uh, they just want to do it like the right way, so everyone tries to be happy or as happy as we can make everyone, which is almost impossible, but uh, like, let's say that we try our best. Uh, <laughs> any parting thoughts, anything that you would like to share with the, with the uh, blog community that we have at OpenShift? Parting thoughts? Um, no, not really. I just uh, continue to code on, I guess, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, well, uh, here you're going to see on the screen all the uh, links. I think you have been seeing them during the video uh, to contact Eric, uh, his blog, his Twitter. Uh, like you mentioned, he's quite active. So, and uh, I think in, in the following weeks, we're going to have at least one of or two of his articles in our blog. So, uh, well, thanks for that. And apart from that, well, thank you for your time and have a great day. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you.